Hey, this is Cameron, and welcome to the practice log. It's another morning session. It kind of looks like a night session because it's so dark out. It's just because it's early, which is unheard of for a loser guitarist. That's why I post these at noon, because I know that you guys aren't going to be up earlier than that. Because you're loser guitarist too. Anyways, let's go ahead and make our way to the chair. I'll see you there. Hey, you know, gotta rep the merch. Head on down over to Rootin's Delight and buy yourself some Honest shirts made by Honest Folk in, uh... Where are these made? Hold on, let me see. They're made in Nicaragua, apparently. I'm not gonna look too far into it. I'm an ethical man. My middle name starts with an E, and I like to think that that E stands for ethical. Cameron Ethical Fernandez. I actually have some updates for you, and we're just gonna talk for a bit. We're just gonna have a little rap sesh, okay? And maybe you're noticing, if you're like a hardcore sore hands viewer, when things started off, it was a very even split of like morning session, night session, morning session, night session, always doing that. And it was seven days a week, just like every day. Kind of noticed that I've just been slowly backing off. So like I went to like five days a week, two out of every three sessions are morning sessions, which is bad because it means that I'm practicing my Bach a lot and I'm kind of neglecting all the pieces I'm working on at night. So I think I need to adjust. And I think a really smart adjustment that I'm gonna make, which feels kind of bad because I do have these like rules that I've set for myself with like night session I practice this, morning session I practice this. But I think I need to start treating my practice routine sort of like how I treat my workout routine where it's like push, pull, classical, baroque, romantic, modern. And I switch between those. Yeah, so I think today in this morning session, and this will be the first morning session ever, I'm gonna work on the Morel Sonatina and the Barrios Waltz and Requerdos. Because I have a lot of music I'm working on in the night session, and it seems that I have one or two night sessions a week versus like four or even five sometimes morning sessions. And you know, the reason for this, not that I need to explain myself or anything, but I just wanna like provide something. When I first moved to the town that I'm in, I didn't really have any friends or connections connections that would have me like out during the night hours or like after work hours. So I was just kind of chilling in my apartment anyways and I would just practice. So dedicating that time wasn't really a big deal. But you know, as I've like made connections here, I've met like guitarists around and I've just been more social in general. I've been engaging in more like nighttime activities. I'm finding that it's a better idea to sort of put my practice earlier in the day. I'm planning on practicing at 9 p.m. and then you get a call and then what happens is the Morel Sonatina and all the romantic slash modern music I'm working on it just gets neglected, which is unacceptable. I'd rather die than let the Morel Sonatina and the other music I'm working on get neglected. Instead of dying, we're just going to change the schedule, and that's that's a solution. So yeah, no matter if it's morning or night going forward, I'm just always going to work on the next set of pieces, and that'll just be a more even split of things, and I think that's a good idea. There's been a lot of questions. Oh, here we go. This is a nice positive one to start off with. This one was for my advice uh, on how to get gigs as a classical guitarist. Somebody disagreed with me, because basically what I said was, if you want gigs, you should, I mean, have a set, of course, of, like, the music that you're working on. And I'm speaking specifically as a classical guitarist, and, and I'm saying that because I feel like getting a classical set together, that's, like, a classy thing to do. If you can play a classical set really well, and it's, like, high-level music, I feel like a lot of, like, fancy restaurants would be super down with you. Like obviously, if you're, like, a singer-songwriter or something, not there's anything wrong with that, but it is less classy, uh, so not every restaurant would be cool with you, but some places will be. Like, the venue that I live next to, they're, they're always hiring singer-songwriters, and I can hear them from my freaking apartment, and it makes me want to... Classical guitar, it's, like, non-offensive and easy listening, and also very, like, cool to hear if you are interested in it. So, at least in my experience, people are pretty receptive of letting you play classical guitar wherever you want. And so, my advice was to call every venue that you can, tell them what you do, send them a sample or something, and then maybe offer to do, like, a free first gig. And that's just me using, like, businessman logic just to, like, solve this issue. Because that's how I approach everything in life. Like, I'm telling you exactly what I would do if I wanted to start gigging as a classical musician. But, Guitar and Gaming 1, you said, not trying to be a downer. Thanks for clarifying that. I appreciate that you're not trying to be a downer, that's cool. But I don't agree with your advice on gigs. I have never met a working musician who got a constant well-paying gig by offering a free sample. The opposite effect has happened in Boston, with all the Berkeley students undercutting each other
together for gigs. It's gotten to the point where it's extremely difficult to get restaurants in that area to pay you for music, because 12 different saxophone players will offer to play for tips. I could imagine that would be an issue in Berkeley. Like, oh man, so many jazz players in one spot. I Especially in like a band setting, like a jazz combo, where everyone's kind of learning the same style and probably like the same tunes too. Like this saxophone player is asking for 100, this one's asking for nothing, and they both are the same and they go to the same school. I could definitely see how that market is way more saturated. And that's another beautiful thing about the guitar. Classical guitar, it's really cool, it's really non-offensive, highly palatable, and it's rare too. Like, go to any city with a big guitar program, how many classical guitarists, like high-level players, are there really? Not that many. Under 20, probably? And that would be like a bigger city too, with a lot of venues, I'd imagine. Like, in the city that I live in, there were like, what, like six or so? Like, if they all wanted to gig, they totally could, without undercutting each other. It wouldn't be that hard. And that's another really nice thing about classical too. It's just you, man. There's no combo, no like splitting the pay or anything. It's just you with your little symphony box. So I do feel that there's a difference in genre. And as far as cities go, like Boston must be the most saturated with like jazz musicians. So I don't know, that that is a tough one. I, I don't know how they would get gigs. I totally do hear what you're saying. Uh, I agree that with some genres, that would be an issue, like with what you said. But I, I really do think with classical guitar, we kind of have a way around that because there's not that many of us like I said the music is highly palatable everybody wants to hear it I mean people love classical guitar I'm just saying that I don't know if they actually do it seems like they do they at least love flamenco so maybe that's actually good advice learn flamenco oh god if I was in a restaurant and I heard flamenco though I'd be so pissed if they were playing like little like drum beat like tappy tappies instead of sore and bach but I digress I have this issue where I plan on answering multiple questions but then I end up just talking for like 20 20 minutes and then that's the whole video. Okay, I'll do some easy ones. This one is from fellow guitar YouTuber. It's yo boy JY. How's it going, man? Hope you're doing well. You said, did my bro iron his curls? Conditioner? All natural? I'll walk you through my hair routine. So here's what I do. It all starts with the diet. I try to eat as many artificial sweeteners as possible. I feel that that does something for my hair. As for conditioner, I use Pantene volume and body. Looks like that. Yeah, it's two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. Because when you're in a rush like me, and you got stuff going on, you can't be wasting your time with shampoo and conditioner. You gotta put that in the same bottle. And I use that like every other day. I don't wash my hair every single day. Like, I, I don't think I washed my hair yesterday. And I haven't showered, really. <laughs> yeah, but I like that stuff because it makes my hair smell really good. I was using another shampoo, and it was just shampoo, and it was making my hair kind of dry, and it didn't have like the aroma that it has now. But now if you could smell it, my hair, it smells like girl hair, which is great. I love girl hair. Um, <laughs> yeah, am I right, fellas? Do you remember when you were, like, in high school and you are like, talking to a girl? She, like, turns her head and you just, like, briefly smell it for a moment. And then you're like, oh, I think I'm in love now. <laughs> That's what my hair smells like. So it's nice. And then about curling it? No, I would never, ever curl my hair. Never straighten my hair. Mainly because I don't want to damage it. Everything you're seeing here is just what my hair looks like. And this is my bed head right now. I just woke up. I invite you to go to my earlier logs. The very first log that I posted, that was like a fresh haircut. I had a haircut like maybe like two weeks before that. So what you've seen through this whole process is just no haircuts, which is kind of cool. I had long hair when I was a kid, or when I, when I was a kid, like in high school and in middle school, I had long hair and like cut between them. I'm approaching like as long as it's ever been. Like my hair's been like down to here before, like shoulder length. I think I'm just gonna like, kind of let it ride for now. I had like an adult professional haircut for a while there, like between 22 and like 25. Since I've grown my hair out, I've been reminded like how much I like having long hair and I feel like it's kind of a good look. I also like it too because it's sort of a dog whistle to like all the other losers out there. When you see a man in his mid-20s with long hair, you just no, he doesn't have a job. And I kind of like that too. It expresses like I am a guitar loser and I need you to know that. When you see me walking the street in my sore shirt like at 1 p.m., he's not on lunch break. He just woke up. He's just doing nothing. That's what that guy does. Oh, and headbanging. 
Oh man, I miss headbanging. So I'm probably gonna keep it for a while. Yeah, no styling. I may one day throw some dye in there. Like a part of me wants to do like a streak of something or something like that. I don't want to freak my students out too much though. But you know, it doesn't matter. I would never go full like dye though. I, I wouldn't want to do that. But just like a little like highlight or something maybe. But then again, like, I don't know, who cares? I don't do a whole lot of like modification stuff with like my hair or body. Like I don't have any tattoos or anything, no piercings. It just doesn't really scratch the itch for me that it seems to scratch for other people. I've never dyed my hair either. The only thing I do is like trim my beard in a very specific way. I'll tell you how I trim my beard. Hey, <laughs> you guys are getting the full shebang here. I have clippers. I do a number four on the goatee, like around there. And then I do a number three on the sides. And then on the mustache, I do a number two. And then with the uh, with three and two, I also shave down here to sort of taper it into the goatee because that's easier than mewing, I guess. And then that's how I shape my beard into the shape that it is. It sounds a little complicated. I had to come to that after a long time of like growing a beard because I've been growing a beard since like high school, basically. Yeah, and I found that that's like the best look for me. And I'm probably just going to stick with that for the rest of my life. So I do that like once every 10 days or so. And, you know, occasional like shaving the neck, which I haven't done in a little while. That's everything you need to know about me. Any other questions about anything? I was going to answer more questions about zoom but it has just simply been too long and i don't want to edit this one for that long so it's time for me to practice now i will see you in the piano bench i'm going to start with recuerdos haven't worked on that in a bit i will see you on the other side <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I feel pretty good about what I've done here today. It's been almost like two hours. Oh yeah, it's been exactly two hours. All right, well, let me bring you closer. Man, I'll tell you what, it is kind of refreshing working on night music during the morning, because I put a lot of work into Recuerdos today. I worked on it for like an hour, and then the Morel Sonatina was the other hour. I'm gonna play the second section of Recuerdos for you, and I'm not gonna do any like processing or anything like that. I just wanna show you that I can play it, just to prove it to you. Uh, like, I can't play it that well. And then after this, I'm gonna play the first section with my usual reverb and stuff. But yeah, check this out. So this is the second part. Page turn. That's what we got. So, you know, I looked at most of that today, but now I'm gonna play the first section for you and I'm gonna try to play it well. We'll see.
the first string a few times there, but that's okay. The main stuff I'm doing to work on tremolo is just accent work. So I'm playing like really soft P, soft P, haha. Uh, and then AMI, I'm accenting all three of them, like that. P will get louder, of course, because like it's hard to control it as you go faster. But I'm hoping that it'll sort of balance out so I get like a very balanced, like, and articulated uh, tremolo. Because you can hear this in a lot of tremolo, where it's just that sort of... It's like the barely there and like not very articulate tremolo. You want like the John Williams tremolo, where it's like... Da -da 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 -da, just... Not that that's anywhere close to John Williams' tremolo. I think that'll be good in a few months. I can at least play the first two sections. There's one more section, and I have a feeling it's gonna be kind of similar to the first two, so I won't have that hard of a time with it. All right, well, I think it's time for me to wrap this thing up, so I'll see you in the outro. Hey, well, if you made it this far, be sure to subscribe and leave a like. And hey, want some shirts? Head on down to Rootin's Delight, link is in the description. Uh, and hey, want some guitar lessons? Uh, head on down to my description and find my email and my rates, you can find it all there. Get old honest guitar lessons from an honest boy like me. Only accepting students who are honest. Dishonest students need not apply. I don't know where I'm going. Actually, I'll take dishonest students too, I don't care, I'll take your money. I'm like a corrupt dojo leader. There's the psychopath kid that joins, but I'm like, whatever, his parents are paying for it, it's fine. You'll hurt someone, I don't care. No, no. Um, be a good person. And if you want to be a better person, you should get better at guitar, because as we all know, the better you are at guitar, the better person you are, just like, in general. Alright, uh, comment questions, of course, feel free to leave them and I'll answer them at some point. Alright, I think it's time for me to start my day, I got some editing to do, and all that. I'll see you tonight.